Patience, Tom. Oh, my hey. pleasure, Jim. Hey, here we are. Hey, thanks for waiting, everybody. I'm going to uh, hopefully uh, hopefully some people are tuning in right now. Sorry for the delay. We had a little bit of trouble with the audio, but uh, fortunately, Tom stuck around and we figured it out. So, uh, hey, welcome to Exploring Hypnosis. I'm your host, Jim Kellner. And uh, as I always say, I believe that a rising tide lifts all boats. And so that's why I uh, like to try and encourage other hypnotists to um, to rise, all of us together. Today, I am super stoked, everybody, because I'm talking to the legend. Honestly, this guy really is a legend. Um, you've seen him on TV. He's um, he's had numerous uh, movies. Uh, I mean, there's going to be a there's I can't well, I don't know what I can say or not. So I'll let him him tell you more. But uh, I mean, really, this guy is just I mean, when you say world renowned, this is the guy. This is Tom Silver. Everybody, give it up for Tom Silver. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yeah, me too. So uh, hopefully everybody's clapping at home. Uh, Tom, can you tell us a little bit about yourself for those people that have been living under a rock? Okay. Well, first of all, it's time to come out from that rock. There's okay, a lot yeah. more you can see if you get out of the rock. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, uh, I've been I've been in the field of hypnotherapy for 35 years. I teach courses around the world. I've been on a lot of television shows, and I kind of consider myself a scientific tester. Yeah. So I create methods to improve the effectiveness of hypnotherapy, and I like to look at hypnosis as a science, and because that's really what it is. It's a neuroscience. So I'm really happy to be here with you, Jim. It's weird. I'm hearing this echo as I mm. talk. There's an echo. You don't, you probably don't hear it. Uh, you know, for some reason, I'm not hearing it today, but I sometimes do. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I'm really glad to be here and to talk about hypnosis and maybe to clarify some of the misconceptions that people have or maybe the fears that people might have when they attempt a technique on somebody and they think they failed. Because it's really important that the act of trying, the act of creating, the act of creation is yeah. really the most enjoyable part of any journey. And that was according to a very famous French movie producer named Noir. And mm. he said, it's the act of creation that's the most enjoyable part of the experience. Not the creation afterwards, mm. but the act of being involved in the process. I get that. I really do. Yeah, the, the, the actual work. Um, I get that a lot. And, you know, the reason so it was funny because, you know, I've been wanting to have Tom on uh, for a while to talk about uh, different things. And, you know, the focus of this, I try to make the focus of this, you know, exploring hypnosis, the interviews uh, really aimed at the newbies and the, and the kind of the wannabes out there uh, that want to be hypnotists. And also maybe just shed some light on hypnosis for those folks that don't know a lot about hypnosis. And we were talking last week. And it was just like, oh, we have to do an episode about this because we were talking about uh, about failure, about hypnosis, quote unquote, fails. And I don't I don't know. Is there a better term that we could use that rather than hypnosis fails? <laughs> uh oh, did I lose you again? Oh, no. Oh, somehow you got muted. Hold on. Let me turn you back on. I don't know what goes, is going on there. Uh, it says your mic isn't connected. It's doing that again. I don't know what's, I don't know why. Ah, I hate you technology. Um, okay, let's, okay, now, now it's done muted. Okay, so, so I'm gonna take off these headphones when I, okay. because it has an echo. So really, okay. the bottom line is it fail. We only fail if we stop doing something, if we stop perfecting a method, if we stop fine tuning our technology, if we stop our practice. I mean, if, to get good, you have to practice. And the more you practice, the more effective, the more successful you're going to be in hypnotizing people. But also, I think what's going on is through um, YouTube and Vimeo and all these sites that show somebody just grabbing someone, throwing them down, and they're hypnotized, um, or a magician succeeding in every magic trick or an illusionist, it gives us the false representation 
that not everybody is going to have the same effect. Some people might not be even hypnotized. Others might go into the most receptive state of hypnosis simply by shaking their hand or doing a quick technique. So I think it kind of sets us up to fail. And people who lose their confidence at the beginning and learning hypnosis sometimes throw it out the door because their ego gets hurt. You know, And the bottom line is we've all had those experiences that did not work. I don't right. like to call it a failure. But we've all had experiences. If you've done hypnosis as long as I've done, you've had a lot of experiences where things just didn't go the way the hypnotist thought they would go. Or somebody didn't go under and go into hypnosis or become receptive. I mean, it's happened. I've done an NBA show where people walked off the center court and I was being booed by 10,000 people at the halftime show. Now, if you've ever heard that, where everyone's saying, boo, get off the court. I mean, that's enough to shatter somebody. And, and sure, I was shattered. I was shattered for a few hours. I <laughs> shook it off. The dog shake off, and I, I got back on the pony. I got back on the ride. Because mm -hmm. if we look at these experiences creating scars because we're ego, ego, our egos hurt or shattered, then we'll never allow us to enjoy the journey. And sometimes things not working out is fine. Because maybe someone's not ready to, to allow you to hypnotize them. So I think when we watch these TV shows or these videos and we see someone standing 10 feet in front of a person jumping in the air and jumping on the ground and then dropping, not everything we see is real, folks. Right. So maybe there is, you know, people talk about fake news. Maybe there's fake hypnotists out there. Maybe, maybe sometimes it's an act. I mean, it's really easy to have an actor in the audience that goes out. Uh, Pat Collins, in fact, God bless her, Pat Collins was known as a Hollywood hypnotist. And and one day I had a, a, a session with a guy that was Pat Collins' personal assistant. He's, mm. He was the one that set up all the shows. And a lot of times Pat Collins had her students, her hypnosis students in the audience. And he told me this, and this is the honest to God, this is what he told me. Yeah. He said that Pat would say to the students, Whoever plays the best hypnosis subject will be able to come to the courses for free. Oh. So the bottom line is, you know, not everyone is honest and ethical. Yeah. You know, God willing, we hope people are. I yeah. certainly am. Yeah. But I think it's about time that we realize that if you don't hypnotize somebody, it's a numbers game. It's like it going out on a date. You, know, right. you might go out, hey, man, I went on 40 <laughs> dates before I met my current wife. <laughs> you know, some of them didn't like me. Some of them, when I said I was a hypnotist, they ran away from me. Oh, yeah. They thought I was going to program them or brainwash them. Right. So it's a numbers game. But we got to practice to get good. But nothing in the world is 100% successful. Any hypnotherapist that says they're 100% successful at deeply hypnotizing somebody or putting someone into a trance is full of bull as far as I'm concerned. I agree. I agree. You know, you, you touched on a lot of good things. And, and I think that's what's, and this is, I discovered this when, uh, when I went out to do street hypnosis with some other hypnotists at HypnoThoughts this last, this last year. And I just, yeah. I sort of, I just sort of mentioned, I said, I said, um, you know, not everybody that we work on is going to be a good subject. Not everyone is going to, to, you're going to be able to do like a, you know, sleep and they're going to just, they're going to drop, you know? And, and a couple people were really surprised. They said, Oh my goodness. I didn't know that. I thought I was just doing it wrong. You know? <laughs> and so um, the thing is you could be doing it wrong and I'm not saying you're not, but, but, right. but, but also uh, it really, and this, and there's the thing, and I'm sure you'll agree, Tom, I believe it, at least probably everyone, but at least 90% of the people out there can be hypnotized in some fashion. It's just that not everybody can be hypnotized on the spot within a few minutes, with everybody watching, and that kind of a thing. Well, Jim, you're absolutely right. Everybody goes into hypnosis every single day. We talk about that. Daydreaming, driving right. your car, automatic pilot, watching a movie, hypnotized, yelling at an athlete on a sports event, on TV, hypnotized, putting your keys down, forgetting where you put it, amnesia, hypnosis. So we all go into hypnosis every single day but not everybody will go into that so-called deep trance 
Right. Not everybody's going to go into a state where they're a bundle of jelly and they wake up and go, what the hell did you do to me? Did you probe me? Did I tell you my deep secrets? Why did I get hypnotized? So right. also, that brings an important point, that even though I'm being a little goofy. And the yeah. point is, some people have a fear of losing control. They do, so yeah. the fact is, if you explain hypnosis correctly, when you're doing a hypnotherapy session, whatever their person's experience is, they are still receptive. They're still hypnotized. You know, years yeah. ago, this is a great story. I might as well share it with you. Yeah. Um, you know, I was buddies with Orman McGill. And you you know you know who Orman McGill was. A lot of right. people know. Orman McGill was considered the dean of hypnotists. I take this off so I don't have to hear the echo. But anyway, um, one day I was doing work, helping Orman do a Gilboyne um uh, conference. He was doing a full day seminar, and I hooked Orman up to a wireless mic, and it was great. Orman was into the into the 21st century. You know, he was cool, man. Wireless mm -hmm. system. So at the end of the at the end of the event, I was doing a big company gig, company event. So Orman says to me, "Can I go with you and kind of watch your show?" And you know, I thought, "Hell yeah, come with me, man." I get Orman McGill to come to my hypnotism show. Also, yeah. I was a little nervous because Orman McGill, you know, master yeah. of hypnosis, great, great guy, close friend. So I did the show. Now, how I used to do my hypnotism shows, I was a big believer. If I didn't think you were hypnotized, boom, you're off that show. Yeah. It's like if, if anything looked to me like there was any consciousness going on, I'd eliminate you from that show. Consequently, I had the best uh, receptive um volunteers and subjects in the show, but I had a, a small amount of people in the show. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I might start with 10 people or 15 people. I would live down to three or four. Sometimes I'd have two. Sometimes I'd have one Yeah. because unless I thought you were really hypnotized and that's, this is, this is important because a lot of these um, up and coming hypnotists and people that study and go to a school, if, if they don't believe you're hypnotized, all of a sudden it affects them because they're the ones hypnotizing me. Right. So I finished up the show and it was a great show. And Orman says to me, Tom, that was a really good show, but I gotta ask you a question. He says, why'd you let so many people go? <laughs> and I said, well, Orman, I didn't think they were hypnotized. And he said to me this, he said, were they participating following your instructions? I said, yes. I remember when you're doing a therapy session, if they're following your instructions, they're already suggestible. They're already in the suggestible state. Right. He said, were they having fun and participating in the creativity? Mm -hmm. And I said, yes. He said, were they doing anything to embarrass you or make you look silly or stupid? You know, because sometimes you're doing a show and you turn around and someone does this or they make these sure. faces. You know, that's yeah. why people have assistants to, to tell you which people are screwing around right. you to get rid of. You know? <laughs> so um, yeah. I said, I said, no, they weren't doing anything to belittle my show. Mm -hmm. He said, keep them in. He mm -hmm. says, every one of those people were hypnotized. Mm -hmm. Every one of them. Yeah. And he says, by you taking them out, you took them away from having a, a once in a lifetime experience. And That's a good so, point. Yeah. ever since he said that, boy, I had a lot of people in my shows. I, <laughs> I changed my philosophy. And look at that philosophy for the same thing in hypnotherapy. Mm -hmm. We're not there for us to determine, are they in a deep trance? Are they in light hypnosis? Are they right. not hypnotized? Yeah. Because the results of the session should speak for itself. But if you set it up with integrity, mm -hmm. with proper information, and they're following your instructions, they are hypnotized. And the fact that even when they walk into your door, they're going into hypnosis. And scientifically, once they close their eyes, they already move from 30 hertz to 10 hertz. Mm. They're already in alpha. So closing their eyes will put them into a suggestive state. But what I have seen over the years is many of the students, because they don't have this, this deep trance experience, don't believe hypnosis is real. Right. And if you don't believe hypnosis is real, mm. you'll never be a great hypnotherapist. That's true. Now, what I can do on others, no one can do on me. 
mm. but I could do it on others. Yeah. And and that's the philosophy. Does that make sense? It does. And you know, I and uh, again, you touched on so many so many good things. Um, so one of the things is, you know, I and I'll, I'll give you an example of, um, you know, I never wanted to be a stage volunteer. I I knew I wouldn't be good at it because I if I'm on stage, I want to be in control and and uh, I don't honestly I don't get people like my friend uh, huh, uh, Ron. Uh, he was at Hypnothoughts and he says he loves to go up and get hypnotized and he acted goofy and silly and I'm like I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? Um, but I did go up. Um, Sean Michael Andrews kind of pulled me up there and I went up there reluctantly. And I had an experience. It was an emotional response to the suggestions, even though there wasn't a, uh, necessarily, I wasn't physical about it. I mean, one thing was they were passing out ice cream cones and I didn't, I, I was like, this is, this is ridiculous. You know, I know it's not really ice cream, but Tom, when I didn't get the ice cream, I almost started to cry. <laughs> and, and I thought you were I was, deprived. I was, I thought I was insane. Cause I'm like, how can I be sad? I know it's not real, but I still had this emotional response and so, yeah, I think it is interesting that, that, you know, we can have people that are very, you know, out there moving around, but we can also have people that are just sort of in their head. And then I've even talked to people afterwards that didn't move around very much, but I was like, so what was that experience? Like you weren't really in, I guess you weren't really hypnotized. Like, oh no, I was out. I just didn't, I didn't feel like moving around. I was just relaxed. Well, because not everybody gets, becomes physical. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that subject on the stage it's just there for the whole time, hypnotized. Yeah, they're kind of like a hypno prop. They're a prop like in yeah. a movie show. Yeah, but they could be having an amazing experience. Right. I've had subjects not doing anything, communicating to their dead brother, or other mm, psychic wow. or spiritual experiences, or mm -hmm. being in some lights or or whatever. Mm -hmm. So they are having an experience. But the other thing to remember that some people will not disappoint the hypnotist. <laughs> so they will please the hypnotist by following all the instructions yeah. and being completely aware and completely conscious and completely in control, but mm -hmm. still hypnotized, mm -hmm. but in a very light stage of hypnosis. So in a stage show, you have a number of experiences. You have the real synapulous. A person that's having a full blown hallucination, illusion. They're really living and feeling that experience, like a like a full regression versus a fragmented or partial regression during hypnotherapy. Mm -hmm. um, you also have the person that is still aware, but the suggestions are so strong they cannot resist the suggestions. Mm -hmm. They have an uncontrollable urge that is stronger than their willpower to resist and they follow through, but they're completely aware. That happened on my brainwash show with one of the people who shot someone in New York. She knew exactly what she was doing. They didn't show it on the show, they only showed one person on, on the TV show. She knew exactly what she was doing. She would never have picked up a gun in her entire life against her morality. She couldn't stop herself. The mm -hmm. urge overpowered the logic and reason. Mm -hmm. So you have those two experiences. Then you have third, which is a person that finally, for the first time in their life, they get to be somebody. Yeah, they right? They feel yeah. like they're important, like they're an actor and celebrity. How many of us had dreamed of being a, an actor or celebrity? I know I did. I wanted to be a movie star. Yeah. And so they get a chance to finally be in front of a group of people and be somebody. Mm -hmm. A chance to shine, which is a wonderful gift you're giving them. Mm -hmm. and, and they're completely aware of what they're doing, but the fact they're doing it, they've already lost their inhibitions. The fact that the inhibitions have been dropped is yeah, you know, um, it's it's and that is one of my that's one of my biggest selling points when I'm talking to, to potential clients. Like you're giving your audience a gift that they don't always get. You know, they don't always get to have this opportunity to perform, and that's why you know I really do. You know, like as a stage hypnotist, it's not it's not about me. It's about them because I get to be on stage all the time. This may be their one opportunity, and so I really want them to shine. And uh, and so I think that's that's uh, super important. There was something else you'd said that um, shoot, I should have wrote it down. Uh, well, what, why anyway. why you're thinking about yeah. that? Let me say one other thing. Uh, I have been on legal consulting in two major accidents that occurred in two different state shows. Mm. One was at Notchbury Farm in Buena Park. The other was at Heron's Hotel in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And the reason those accidents occurred is because the state hypnotist, I won't name names. They care too much about themselves being the show versus the audience being the show yeah. and them being there to take care 
keep everyone safe, protect everyone, and to also have fun. But they weren't there watching out for any accidents that could occur or wording the suggestions that would create fun without any kind of dangerous environment or suggestive danger. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely does. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it can be it can be really and I can see where it can be super tempting to want to push the envelope. You know, when you're up on stage and you've got a really good subject and you think, you know, uh, I'm not even going to name out some of the things you could do because I don't give any ideas. But I mean, there's all so many things. But but again, it's you're, I mean, is, is it really for the entertainment value? Is it going to are you going to protect your volunteer? You're going to keep their integrity, their physical safety? Or is it more about you just showing off as a hypnotist, you know? Yeah, and if if you're gonna have somebody, I'm sorry, I'm oh yeah, it's okay. If you're gonna have someone think they have to go to the bathroom on stage, or or they're gonna throw up, or you're sticking a doll and think they're getting punctured by by a, a big giant needles in all parts of their body. Yeah, I mean that's insane. Yeah, you know what kind of people do that insanity? That is not fun. I mean, right. that is that to me is like that's the most awful thing you could do, and and it gives everyone else. Who do, who do legitimate shows, it gives them a bad reputation, and it gives hypnosis a bad rap. Remember, yeah. hypnosis is an art and a science, and even Dr. James Bray, who coined the word hypnosis, derived from the Greek word hypnos, yeah. he was inspired by seeing an outdoor performance in London by La Fontaine, mm. the stage hypnotist back in the 1800s. So shows could be fun, and, and you could still do things that are hilarious, mm -hmm. but when you do things that are degrading, disgusting and even mm -hmm. even psychologically dangerous or, or um, um, that could create even a, a state of post traumatic stress you know yeah. that's that's where you have to draw the line and yeah. I think I think it's important that we are trained in safety and and, and that yeah. hypnosis gets to a level of being ethical more ethical um, you know I don't have to outdo you you know, because I'm not competing. None of us are competing. And if you're just starting and learning hypnosis, you don't have to be me. You don't have to be Jim. Just be yourself. Yeah. Keep your honesty and integrity. Keep your honesty about who you are. That's really the – there's no secret why I got on all these TV shows. People right. like me as a human being. And my concern, of course, was for everyone to have fun and get the results. But I also yeah. cared about the people I was working with and get the time yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, like when I first started, uh, I, you know, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, it wasn't always, uh, I wasn't, I didn't always have the same, same thought. And I used to do a, I used to do a bit, a uh, missing body part. And I'm sure you know which one you do it on a guy and he loses something very important to him and the crowd loves it. I mean, they go nuts. It's hilarious. I had a guy literally stand up when I said on three stood up and started crying. I mean, he, it was that, it was that severe a reaction. And I was like, oh, I can't, I can't do this anymore. This is, you know, I mean, of course I gave it back to him. It was bigger and better than ever, but, but still, you know, in that moment, there was real, there were real tears. And of course that just made the audience laugh even more. And I felt, I felt, but it's, you know, I could see where it's tempting to want to keep doing that. But I, you know, and I do get requests to do it, you know, if I'm doing a certain show, or something, but I, I, I'm really trying to steer clear of anything that's, that's not hundred percent positive. Well, yeah, and you know, and their shows famous every night where they're doing that stuff. You know, I've had I've had subjects come in that were in those stage shows with some of the, the two top guys in Las Vegas. We won't name names, but yeah. even they told me they they weren't even. They said to me, "I wasn't hypnotized. I was just acting silly and stupid." Mm. You know, and and they were drinking. They were under alcohol and stuff like that. But it is important, and you know, I've been in this field a long time, man. You know. I, I've done all of those things myself in the past. <laughs> yeah. You know, in the old days when cigarettes wasn't, you know, when, when alcohol, cigarettes were not that big of a deal, you'd have people, you know, imagine they're drinking some Hawaiian punch and they're getting drunk. Mm -hmm. This day and age, you don't do that because yeah. of all the damage of alcohol, all the alcoholics, all, sure. all the people yeah. under alcohol that have killed other people and ran them over and everything like that. You know, so. So you do change certain bits, just like that body rigidity, you know, right. in the old days, everyone had someone stand on, on top of their bodies. I remember Lachlan in Universal Studios. I was doing a, a weekly show at the Hollywood Athletic Club at Universal City Walk, and Lachlan was a famous hypnotist from Canada. And Lachlan, um, you know, uh, he, he did that body rigidity and stood on a woman who fell 
scrapped your back, huge lawsuit. He never worked at that rest that play venue again. So those things could happen. Wow. I'll tell you some weird stories because you know why not? You know this is yeah. stuff in the past. I, I, I have nothing to hide. You know because <laughs> um, because years ago when I first started, when I actually had long hair, I had big sideburn. I mean, you know. I don't know you, if you've seen my old photos. I don't know if I have. Oh yeah, you look here. you look like but, you know you, you look like Tom Selleck. Yeah, huh? you have the big you have the big Tom Selleck mustache. Oh yeah, yeah. I was a cool dude, man. I look back and I was like, why now, Lord? No, I didn't. So anyway, so I was doing this show. It was a Christmas party, and this is probably my first or second year doing stage hypnosis, and it was um, in um, Van Nuys Boulevard in the San Fernando Valley. Uh, a restaurant called um, Humphrey Yogurt. It was a yogurt place, and I was, I was, and Santa Claus was there in the audience. It was a cool deal. I, I even have the video, man. I've got. I'll, oh, yeah. I'll have to show you the video of this someday. So anyway, so back in those days, we do a bit where we have everyone on the counter tree look at the audience. Everyone in the audience is naked. They're not wearing clothes, mm. and that was that was one of the fun bits in those days. So everyone would be laughing and say, point to them, they're not wearing clothes. And I get all animated and all that. And I have some music playing, like the Looney Tunes song. Da, 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 you know, some weird, you know, animated music. So then I would say the second part was, but guess what? People on stage, they're wearing clothes, but you're naked. You don't have any clothes on. And uh -huh. people would crack up behind, behind the chairs. People would do this. The exhibitionists would just hold their legs right. out. Yeah. You know, you'd actually see... Uh, Sexuality, certain people, you know what I mean, uh -huh. who who had fear of of um, exposing it and who didn't care about their sexuality. Anyway, so I said that I said, but guess what, ladies and gentlemen, on stage they're not naked. You're naked. This guy darted out of the restaurant. He just oh. ran. He stood up. He oh. just ran out. He's gone. Oh, my God. oh no. He's gone. I look around oh. now. Now this was my last wife. In those days, I was using audio cassettes. So I had a Box like fifty cassettes. So imagine just having to switch cassettes for each bit. How stressful that oh, deal was! Wow, jeez. So my wife was on the other side of the restaurant. I was here. The subjects were here, and she was here. So this guy jumps up. He runs out. I, I'm, I'm looking. I'm shocked. I don't know what to do. Um, I, I rehypnotize the subjects on stage. And I say, uh, Susan, uh, I say to her, I say, hey, go, go down. So she <laughs> runs out of the restaurant. Now she's gone. For about four or five minutes. Yeah. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what if he ran out in the middle of the road and got hit by a car or something? You know, so finally I walk out and I look way down the end of the street. And here she is at the end of the street with this guy hiding behind a trash can. Oh my God. Now, this is one of them wire trash cans, so you can actually see through the trash can. But he's hiding behind it. And she's saying, Ben, come back into the party. He goes, I can't come in. I feel I'm naked. All I've got is my tennis shoes on. I can't come back in. So then she thinks real quick, like she had a jacket on, but she didn't. She goes, well, I have a big jacket on. I'll shoot you. The so next thing I see her walking slowly like this, back to the restaurant. This guy's yeah. hiding right, right in front of her, being yeah. shielded in. And wow. we get back into the restaurant. Uh, he gets back into the restaurant. I put him back down in the chair. I put him back in hypnosis. I put a few more bits and end the show. And then when I was home, I watched the video, mm. and the video showed me something. Mm. The video showed me what we might call an app reaction. Mm. When I said to the subjects on stage, everyone in the audience is naked, everyone was laughing and looking, pointing. He was doing this. He was hiding his eyes oh. and, and just kind of looking out a little bit. Uh -huh. So it told me that somehow he had some type of trauma, probably right. a sexual trauma as a kid. And gotcha. we know that a lot of people are raped for sexually abused oh, yeah. by parents or friends or right. relatives as a kid. Sure. Yeah. And so sure. when I saw that, I realized what occurred. Yeah. That I triggered a mm. very trauma in his life. And he yeah. did a spontaneous regression and he did that he flew right out um, thinking he was naked. I worked with him afterwards, everything was resolved, it was okay. But yeah. after that bit I, I pretty much stopped doing that bit. You know what's you know what's interesting? I just I just did that bit at street hypnosis, so that's I hadn't even thought about that. That's I'm glad I'm glad we're on this talk. I mean, this is this is why we need to know these things. Um, I, I will definitely uh, give that consideration before I do that again. Yeah. Hey, but it could be simple. I, I had them petting little birds in the third grade, and they're talking yeah. to the birds. It's a simple yeah. bit. So 
one lady got really real nervous and, and started crying. Mm. And I put her in the hypnosis and removed it. And later on, after the show, she said that she had a little bird as a kid that died. Oh. So, so she yeah. had this emotional experience. So yeah. these things can happen. Yeah. Just yeah. like in a hypnotherapy session, things could happen. You could be working on something and someone could start crying or going through a strong emotion because once that subconscious is open, something that's been buried can surface, can come up because yeah. we've opened up a hard drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting too, because, and Hey, if you're out there and you've got questions, you know, if you're, if you're watching us live, please drop, drop a comment down there. And we'll, uh, we'll answer your question. Um, I sometimes forget just how powerful this stuff is because I remember, I mean, there'll be times when I will, um, I will give somebody a command and they're doing everything else, like something like jump up and do this. And they do every single thing else I tell them to, but they don't jump up after the show. I go, so what happened with that? I always like to find out, you know, what happened? What and yeah. the guy goes, the guy goes, well, you stuck me to my chair earlier. I couldn't get up. And I was like, I totally forgotten. You know, I didn't, didn't unlock him from his chair. <laughs> hey, did, did I ever tell you the story? Of how I almost got killed on stage. Um, I, I don't tell tell them. I, I I think so, but tell us again. Tell us again for everybody okay, who's watching. Okay, okay. I think I'm a little dramatic about saying that, but <laughs> but I with the stuck deal. So I used to do this thing that not, on the count of three, you'll all stand up if your feet are stuck to the ground. No matter how hard you try, you won't be able to move. So I was doing this show in Hollywood, and I just did it individually on one human being, one guy. So I said, in the moment, you're going to stand up. Um, and I want you to follow me, but you won't be able to move because your feet have been cemented to the ground and you can't move now, no matter how hard you try. So I said, okay. I said, okay, eyes open, stand up. So he stood up and I'm right in front of him and he stands up. And I say to him, I say, okay, follow me. I say, follow me. And I stay right there. He goes to take the biggest step. Oh, His yeah. feet are glued to the ground. He's a big guy. He just falls <laughs> right on top of me. Boom, I go down. I hear my ankle crack. Oh, I hear yeah. it crack. Yeah. And, and I got this 250 pounds of dead weight on my body, you know? Yeah. And I'm thinking, what do I do now? <laughs> <laughs> so I wake him up. I have him yeah. stand up. Go sit back down. Put him back in the hypnosis. I slowly get back up. My ankle's killing me. And I continue to do a great hypnotism show. But that was the last time I've done, I've done that bit. Yeah, that's I. You know, I've, I've so had you, that. You kind of learn by these experiences. I've had that. I've had. I've, I haven't had it that bad, but I've had it where they've almost fallen because I forgot that I'd stuck their feet to the ground, and then they try to go further. For, and I go, "Come on over here," and then they start to come, and they start. I'm like, "Oh crap!" And I got to get up there and, and stop them. So um, it's amazing uh, how 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 powerful this stuff is on the right on the right person. Uh, they can take those suggestions. I want to I want to point out something real quick though. Uh, because there was just somebody, Marion Spurgeon just posted an article, and I haven't, I didn't, I just kind of read through the article. It was on some research that was done uh, because I know a lot of people out there do convincers for hypnosis and this kind of a thing for their hypnotherapy. This study actually indicated that there was no correlation between a person who could who could achieve hypnotic phenomenon really easily and the results they would get from hypnotherapy. And again, I haven't, I just sort of skimmed the article, I have to look at it again, but that's something to consider if you're watching this, you know, maybe check that out. Because I know sometimes people think, well, if they don't get arm levitation or they don't get, you know, hands stuck together or something, then maybe they're not uh, gonna have the kind of results that somebody else might. But I, I think they're totally, they might just be two totally separate things. Well, you know, I think they are two separate things now that you mention it. You know, just because you can create catalepsy mm -hmm. or amnesia, or mm -hmm. full regression doesn't mean the person's going to accept the suggestions for the therapy session true. to change your life. Uh, maybe true, they yeah. don't. Maybe they don't want to let it go. True. Maybe yeah. they're holding on to it and getting a secondary reward for it. Yeah. You know. So if if we say that that's an indicator mm -hmm. that they're that we're going to be successful in the hypnotherapy session, we're probably fooling ourselves. Some people in the most lightest stages of hypnosis suggestibility yeah. also have the best results. You know what? I, I found that and I, I keep, I still keep running into uh, even other hypnotists that are like, 
well, if you know, I haven't got a really good deep trance, so I, I don't think I can make the change work. And it's like, it's, it, it really, I've, and the reason I know is because I've had clients that'll say, you know, and, and you can tell who's, who's really out and who's not, because I have plenty of clients who go, you know, I never hear a word you're saying, and yet they quit smoking or what, or lost weight or whatever. And then I also have clients that go, you know, I, I heard everything you said, but I still quit smoking, you know, so they're, they're still present. They're in just a light trance, uh, but they're still making the change, just like you said. Well, think about it this way. If you really want to look at this in a real congruent, logical way, our subconscious mind identifies and associates with our conscious thoughts. Mm -hmm. In other words, every thought we think, if it relates to, to something in somebody's life or emotions or subconscious or memories, it sends a message down there. So mm -hmm. every, every idea that something that we can relate to in our life becomes a reality in our life. So if that's the case, and, and we sometimes disregard auto-suggestion, which is one of the most key, important parts of change is therapy. So many people just think of it reprogramming the subconscious mind. Let's just install this emotion or this message or that message. But if you don't teach the person how to think correctly, it's all lost. Mm -hmm. if, if I walk out of your office and you hypnotize me to stop smoking and I give myself the suggestion, wow, I'd really like to have a cigarette. I don't care how, how deep, I'll send an ambulance, uh, how much of in the trance they are, they're going to go back to smoking cigarettes. Yeah. So if you if you educate the client properly during your free talk by saying that it, it's important sometimes to be able to remember the suggestions I'm giving you, that's how we create new habits by reinforcing positive, positive cognitive congruent thinking that stimulates the emotional change that we're programming into the hard drive. That's how that emotional habit changes through the re repetition of thought interlinked and connected with emotion so it's okay if a person hears what's being said the, the hypnotist said i'm confident so i guess i am confident but what if you, what if everything was completely done in an amnestic amnesia state True. and they didn't remember anything right they're going to still have the same negative word dynamics and negative auto suggestions that they've come in with i hate exercising i hate eating healthy foods so if you don't change the cognitive program then you probably have missed the opportunity of a real, true, full, full-blown success. Yeah, yeah. And you know, this this kind of brings me to before we. Um, I do want to say so real quick. This does bring me to some of the work that you do and some of the trainings that you do. Uh, before that, I did I did tell everybody I was going to tell about my big fail too. I want to tell you I was I did a, a show one time where no one got hypnotized. I had ten people up there and no one got hypnotized, and I actually went over to a woman, I was working with a DJ at the time and we had this, this code where they would point it out. They would, you know, he would point out who he thought was a good subject for a certain skit. And he kept giving me the signal for this one woman. And I was like, she's not, she's not a good subject for this. She's not, I knew she wasn't, but he kept, he kept giving me the signal. I was like, okay. So I go up to her, I touch her on the shoulder and I go, when you hear this music start, he plays this, this song, you, you believe you're Madonna. You, you, you know, you're uh, you're Madonna. She looks, she opens her eyes, looks up at me and goes, you better pick somebody else. How'd you feel? Oh, it was awful. I almost, I just, I wanted to just run right then. You know, I wanted to, you know, it was, and it was nobody, I mean, it was, and it was a terrible, I mean, so there were a lot of things wrong with the whole thing. There was only like 10 people in the whole audience and, and two of them were other comedians and it was absolutely awful. But here's the thing. I got paid. <laughs> I lived another day. I learned from the experience. It turns out that they couldn't hear what I was saying when I was doing the hypnosis, that there were no monitors and they couldn't hear what I was saying. And I didn't realize that. And so, um, guys, if, if you can't just give up if you don't get the results you expect. I mean, that was like the worst thing could ever happen. You know, what I mean, I'm just lucky there wasn't hundreds of people there because that would be even more mortifying. But um, wow, it was it was absolutely awful. Just can terrible. you see? If there's people listening right now, you uh, see? Yeah, we've got, uh, we've only got a few on, about three or four, I think. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to play, I think it's, it's going to be playing right? later too. It's going to, it's going to play, it's going to be on YouTube for later. I, I think, first of all, it's important, Jim, for you and for everyone else to delete and erase that ridiculous word called fail. fail. Mm. Get yeah. that out of your vocabulary. Yeah. Get that. Tell, tell any new hypnotist or, or anyone that's that's new or old in this field to remove that limited belief system. Yeah. Because 
there is no failure. Failure is the is the uh, mother of opportunity. Activeness of trying something. Oh. I only fail if I don't do something. I'm so, sorry. I I thought you were. I thought you. One second. One second. I'm sorry. I thought you were saying your other quote that I, I wrote down the other day. So I interrupted Mother of you. success. Yes, but will you will you uh, say say what you just said though again? Okay. Yeah. So we think about it. It's Thomas Edison. If he accepted the word failure, we would still be using candles. Yeah. You know, and and, and that uh, whatever that that liquid is that that they use to light candles. Right. So. We never fail. We're only having experiences, and those experiences help us to fine tune, to perfect, and then also they can teach us what not to do the next time. So failure is part of the journey. It's a mm -hmm. journey. It's experience. Yeah. And and if we remove the extreme, win, lose, fail, succeed. If we get rid of that extreme, remember what we started off with. It's the journey that's most important. It's not the end result. It's how did I get from here to here to here to here to here? It's the journey. Yeah. It's the struggle that's the joy. It's and the going into these situations that that seem to be ridiculous, but you enjoy the experience of it. So yeah. that's the most important part. If we remove the word fail and we just turn it into action, 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 action. Yeah. Then, then we enjoy it. We enjoy it without label, labeling it. Hey, I've I've been in situations where ninety eight percent of the other hypnotists, number one, were afraid to do it. They told mm -hmm. me you'd fail. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. The big ones, John Cap is some of the big ones. Yeah. Telling me do not, do not go and do this. Yeah. And I still did it because mm -hmm. I enjoy even hypnotizing prisoners against their will. Everyone mm -hmm. told me you couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. But they never had a chance to try it, and maybe they were afraid to try it. So instead of taking the easy way out, I, yeah. I enjoy the journey. I enjoy the act of action, and whatever that action is, if you want to call it um, success or happy or bad or whatever, it's just it's just getting into positive action. And don't take it so serious yeah. because it's like hitting the wrong note. I play music, and if I worried about each wrong note I hit, I'd never play music. But if I hit the wrong note three or four times in a row, it becomes jazz. Yeah, absolutely. So the only one that knows that, that it didn't work is you. Right. You know what I'm saying? I do. And you know, it's, yeah. there's that there's that great saying. It says, you know, the the master has failed more times than the beginner has. Uh, wait, I, I remember how it goes exactly, but it's uh, oh, has has failed more times than the beginner has tried. So. Um, just keep that in mind, everybody, that that Tom has just he's just failed more times. You know, I mean, really, you know, I've just failed more times. And that's I mean, if we're going to use that word, but it really it was a learning experience. You can you can be damn sure. I always check that I can the people on stage can hear now. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? <laughs> well, look at look, look at this way. If we're going to use the word fail. Yeah, I've had the biggest, the real biggest failures in hypnosis that I don't think anyone has ever had. But guess what? I've also had the biggest successes in hypnosis right. yes. in many areas that yeah. I don't think anyone's ever had. That's see, that's what I'm talking about. If you want to, if you want to do great things, you've got to be bold. You've got to get out there and you've got to try these things and not be dissuaded by the by the fear. And I catch myself, you know, I get just when I went out and did, uh, and one of the reasons I did the the the. The make, trying to make the person think they're they're not wearing any clothes is because I decided I had to push myself because I kept doing the same skits over and over when I was doing street hypnosis. I said, you know, I got to start pushing the boundary. I got to see, um, I got to see what I can what I can do, and um, and and yeah, it's not failure, but what it is is you're not always like Tom said. You're not always going to get the result that you hope for, and we all know as hypnotists, we know what we want. We want the the right. person that's just like oh, and does every single thing yeah. that you say, and they. They're amazing, but it just doesn't work that way. And the videos you're watching, and I, I keep I, one of these days, I'm going to put them together. I'm going to put together my my hypnosis uh, feedback video, which shows you all the times where the hypnosis did not go the way that I had hoped. It's just the boring stuff where somebody just sits there and I say, "Okay, raise your arm," and they didn't raise their arm. You know, <laughs> that's just the way it goes. Uh, because because so many of you out there are afraid to keep trying because you think 
because you watch these videos and you know you watch a stage show you watch tom's uh, you know videos on on uh, on tv or something and you think oh it must work all the time just like that it does not that, you're absolutely right now i must say in many of my tv shows what you saw was a real deal oh I sure yeah but yeah. also i must say that i also worked with certain groups of people prior mm -hmm. to that yeah. to make sure I had the greatest opportunity of success. Right. But I never knew what the outcome was going to be. Yeah. I never knew if it was going to work or not work. So I yeah. put everything into it, but I was ready to accept whatever the outcome was. Yeah. And we have to be ready to accept whatever the outcome is, you know, because if we are, if we are ready to accept it, then, then we don't beat ourselves up. We don't blame ourselves. I'm only as good as somebody's desire to change or somebody's desire to participate. I'm right. only as good as somebody's desire to allow themselves to be hypnotized. And, and for years, I've always said, uh, and I've talked to movie TV producers on these TV shows, if I do something and it doesn't work, show it. Yes. Show that it didn't work. Because yes. if you see it didn't work and you see some things that do work, the general public might say, wow, this hypnosis is real. Most of the time, the general public watching these TV show think that hypnosis is all stage and fake. Believe yeah. me, they mm -hmm. did it with Paul McKenna's ABC special, with my CBS special. They've done it with the Darren Brown stuff, and they've done it with that Back in the Room series uh, yeah. where they hypnotize a bunch of people to, to do a simple task to get a bunch of money, and they couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. So the fact is, unless you show, show failure or show things not working and some and things working that's the real deal then people will believe it's real yeah. so it, you know and i i wish there would be a tv producer that would understand that because yeah. something not working is just as funny and amazing as something working you know that yeah and you know it's um, it's interesting so we were just talking about this the other day is like um, i did a podcast recently uh, that they videotaped and i told them ahead of time i said please please don't because the, the the host had had been a, when he was an intern on radio shows. Apparently, he'd he faked it a couple of times for hypnotists. And I said, "Please don't. I know it's better. People love to see that stuff, and I know in that way it's kind of better. But I would much rather have them see the variety. See that some people react in one way, some people do another way. Because the thing is, we just not everybody's going to react the same way. I mean, it's so funny. People will ask me when they call up for a you know to quit smoking or something. Um, does it does it work 100 percent of the time? Like what works 100 percent of the time? Nothing does." Absolutely nothing. nothing. When you're talking to, about human psychology or even physiology, nothing, nothing works 100 percent of the time, right? And so, don't be afraid to show, to show that, and and at least don't be afraid to at least risk the chance that it won't go as you as you as you wanted. If you don't want to post your video of it, that's that's up to you. But but at least stay, keep going out there, keep trying. Yeah, absolutely. I did the Big Boy Show on Power 106 in, in Los Angeles a few years back. And I was on his show for many, many years. Anyway, I had two subjects. One of them was great. He was just the best subject that you could ever have. The other was a girl. And when I put her on the radio and tried some bits, it didn't work. Mm -hmm. and, and I just said she wasn't receptive enough for us to do these demonstrations. Yeah. yeah. And it was real. Yeah. Did I feel bad? A little. I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, we do. We, we're human. We want it to look. We want it to look amazing, right? We want them to yeah. bark like a dog or cluck like a chicken or whatever, you know. Obviously, but you know, it's it really does. It does give the public a, a, a different idea about what hypnosis is. Because, and also, I know for a lot of people, they sit out in the audience and go, "Oh, you could never make me think I'm Taylor Swift, or you could never make me, you know, dance like that." So it must not be real. It's yeah, right. Unless there's someone they know that's in the oh, show. Yeah. Yeah. Then, then they, then they believe it more because someone in the show that they're doing something they would never normally do. But again, if we're talking hypnotherapy and not stage hypnosis, yeah, we do our best to create success in our clients' lives. Yep. But if it doesn't work, if it doesn't, sometimes people think it's a magic wand. Well, I got right. this magic wand. Yeah. I'm, I'm Tommy Tinkerbell, the hypnotist, <laughs> and I can wave this little magic wand, and this, and this hypno dust will go on to them, and their life will change. Part of change is your also your decision to think differently, your decision to act differently, and your motivation to want the change. So sometimes we know as hypnotherapists, 
we cannot have 100% success in one session or two yeah. sessions or five sessions. I'm smart enough to know that if a person sees me over a short period of time and there's no results, I let them know that, that maybe this is just not the right modality for them or maybe yeah. the right time for them. Sure. You know, and, and that's the way we need to be. Not to, I knew a guy that worked over at this hypnosis school in Tarzana, and he was one of the renowned trainers there. I won't even give, give the name of the school or its initials. But mm -hmm. this guy, who recently passed away, I remember once when I was talking to him, when I was teaching some courses there, he said to me, you've got to keep your clients coming back over and over again. You've got to guilt them, oh. give them suggestions under hypnosis. Oh, and no. once you help them with one thing, you've got to find other problems. He goes, oh. I've got these clients that were given to me, that were passed down from John Kappas to me, that they've been seeing a therapist for 10 years. Oh, man. I don't practice my therapy that way. Me I want I want long-term results with a short amount of time working with them. Right. And if I see that it is working and they see that it is working, we can continue to, they have the final end result. Yeah. But if it's, but if they come in to see me and they've over, how dare me think I want to manipulate them to keep coming back. Oh yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, you know, and, and, and unfortunately I think that is, that is true for, for, for some, uh, anyway, what can you do? <laughs> Um, but you know what? I've lost your I've lost your audio again. Um, not sure what happened. <laughs> I can't hear you. Uh, uh The why does it keep doing this? I don't understand. Oh, I think you're back. There you are. Okay. So okay. you know what? Before we go, because um, uh, we've already been at almost an hour. Look. Uh, so I really I hope that this has been helpful for you all. You know, um, please get out there and do it. And I want to let you all know, especially those of you that are in the Pacific Northwest, but if you're if from anywhere, really, Tom doesn't do a whole lot of trainings anymore, except, you know, one on one. And he's agreed to do a training in the Northwest, either in Medford or up in the Seattle area. We haven't figured that out yet um, exactly. And Tom, can you tell us what people could expect to get out of that training? Well, I mean, teach him and certify him in neurological, physiological, scientific hypnosis. Mm -hmm. Methods, techniques, inductions, linguistics, ERT, emotion replacement therapy, and neurofeedback, the process of using a diagnostic tool, electroencephalograph, monitor brainwave frequency changes as a validator for yourself as a hypnotherapist and for your client. Sometimes we have to show the client that they actually were in this receptive state of hypnosis. Remember, we're educators and re-educators. Mm -hmm. And so it's important that when you do learn or train with somebody, that you're, you're training from somebody that has a track record, that really has proven success in what they do. And I think that's really important, whether you're, you're training with me or, or somebody else. You know, I've taught courses all around the world. And in fact, I'm going to be at the uh, International Hypnosis Congress in Rome, Italy in June. I'll be the guest speaker there. And uh, so Jim and I were talking about putting together a course, real hands-on, a lot of work, a lot of practice, real life sessions in the classroom. So mm -hmm. we are we are doing real life therapy in there. And some yeah. trainers are, are hesitant to do anything really live with real people. I have a training course coming up this next week. I have a guy coming in for five days training. I have two hypnotherapy sessions with people that I just met, I've never worked with, that's going to be coming in, and I'm also going to be doing a Skype session with a gentleman who has some emotional trauma from some events he's witnessed in the past. And that's a real deal. Imagine doing courses or and you're you're having actual real raw life therapy in yeah. there. See? And, and that's what we're talking about with you practicing or doing your stage shows or practicing hypnotherapy. Enjoy the journey of it. Whatever the end result is, accept this. And if you've done the best you've done, guess what? Then you learn how to do it better the next time because you follow through and it's the journey that's the most important. It's not the end of the result, but yeah. it's going in and fine-tuning your skills, becoming the best that you can be. The best you can become is action, perfecting, testing, and, and modifying. Mm -hmm. And if you can do that and continue and remember, just like Jim and I said, nothing's 100% successful. The only thing that's 100% success 
is the fact that we're all here for a limited time. <laughs> we're all going to leave at some time in the future, right? That's a limit. But there's nothing that's 100% successful. Nothing. Medicine, no. psychology, hypnotherapy, stage shows. Yeah. But enjoy the journey. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. Release that pressure cooker. Just yeah. enjoy the fact that you have embraced an amazing, powerful art and science, hypnosis. Be the best you can be and practice. Don't sit around thinking about doing it. Get out there and do it. I did everything and anything, freebies, anything I could to mm -hmm. fine tune my skills yeah. to become uh, the best that I can become. And I'm still fine tuning my skills. After 35 years, I'm mm -hmm. still continuing to test and to see what works and what does not work as successful as what does work more successful. Eliminate yeah. that word failure too. There's Absolutely. no failure. There, there's the ability to stand in one place, but get out of that comfort zone and enjoy the journey of the uncharted waters of the inner mind that we call hypnosis. I love it. I love it, man. I love it. You know, so seriously, guys, uh, and I, we haven't we haven't even picked out a date yet. We're not sure if we're doing it again in Seattle or in, or in Medford, but it should be. I'm hoping like within the next six months, Tom. Do you think? Oh, absolutely. Okay, yeah, great. We definitely yeah. can. Yeah, we're gonna so we're gonna put that together. So you know, I'll, I'll be connecting with uh, with more of you, you know, one on one. But if you're interested, please hit me up, send me a message. This is September of 2019. Um, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. I can't believe that I'm even talking to. I mean, seriously, this is no BS, people. If you don't know who Tom Silver is, Google him and go look him up. Uh, and while you're at it, go to his website, TomSilver.com. He's got a lot of great products. If you're just a hypnosis enthusiast or just a somebody who wants to try hypnosis, check him out. He's got a bunch of a uh, bunch of books and recordings and uh, maybe get a session with him. I mean, literally this guy is, sorry, I'm just, I'm gushing a little bit. He's a, he's a, he's a legend. Everybody's a legend. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully we'll figure out a date soon and uh, let me know if you're interested in, in attending. One more thing I wanted to mention, yeah. Jim, you know, I do charge a lot of money on these private trainings. Yeah, I know you but, do. But, yeah. <laughs> it's worth it. I mean, but it's worth it. What we're going to yeah. do, because yeah. really I want to, I want to I wanna be able to, uh, I want to be able to educate people correctly, especially someone that really has a desire. We're going to keep the course small, but the price is going to be ridiculously low. I mean, you know, ridiculously low right. that everyone can afford to come to it. Yeah. Uh, we're going to keep it low, but if people are really sincere and serious and they want the real deal based on my life experience, I don't hold things back. I don't say, okay, we're going to do this. Now we're going to get you to the next module, next level. I don't do that BS. I don't play those games. I give you the tools that you really are the best you could utilize based on my, my successes in the past. And you go ahead with your work. If you have questions or anything else, I'm always there to help you. I'm kind of like the, the, the grandfather of hypnosis you never had. I had Orman McGill. You guys yeah. can have me, please. Take me. I'm <laughs> yours. <laughs> no, you know, I mean, that's the thing because people will talk about the fact that they were trained by, you know, Orman McGill or they were trained by Gil Boyne. I mean, Tom Silver is one of those people that years from now you're going to be able to say, you know, honestly, I mean, this is a big deal. I was trained by Tom Silver. We just we just had a great testimonial from, uh, I don't think you can see it on your end, but uh, Alexei Ivanov, he says, uh, I'm just back from curing a person with ERT, emotional replacement therapy, what Tom is also going to teach. And, and I do it on a daily basis. He says, the best. <laughs> wow. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you, Alex. Wow, that's I, fantastic. I know you've got a bunch of people over in the Netherlands too that I that I've become friends with. Uh, I think uh, Joe Ken, I can't remember his last name right offhand now, and then uh, Doctor Watson, I think Christina Watson and uh, Christina Watson. Yeah, they're just they yeah. they talk about you and, all the time. I mean, they, and you know, Christina's yeah. a psychologist, mm -hmm. and she came to the course. Uh, Alexi is an amazing guy. He lives in Ireland, mm. and he's a fantastic hypnotist, and he's he's Russian, so he's mm. from Russia originally, mm -hmm. but he came to my Holland course. That's awesome. So, the fact is, they're using the techniques, and whatever you learn, no matter if it's for me or anyone, if you learn something, don't don't think you have to keep learning more and more and more. That's the other thing. Some people go to oh. five. I, I I I was teaching courses in Holland, and I asked, "How many of you gone to over ten hypnosis courses?" And mm -hmm. almost everyone will raise their hand. Mm -hmm. uh, I said, it, it, "It's like if you learn something that's really good, the real deal, just practice and perfect it, and get real good at it." Right. But you don't right. have to learn. You don't have to think that you have to learn a million different modalities. It's like taking a bunch of darts 
at a balloon and trying to throw it at that balloon, they all disperse. I'd yeah. rather be an expert in some areas instead of master of nothing. And, you know, I see the same thing, you know, conventions and stuff. There, there are people that have, and here's the really scary, I mean, if you're taking a bunch of courses, great. If you're taking a bunch of courses thinking that you're finally going to get the confidence to go out and work with people, I got to tell you, you're going to be better off. Take some basic training, go out there, work with some people, and then do like other professions do. It's called continuing education. You work with people, yes. then you go take Tom's class, for instance, and then you go back and work with people again because that's where you get the real knowledge when, you, when you've worked with people. But just keep it on taking classes, hoping that you're going to get the confidence finally. And, the, and that one technique, if I just had that one technique, finally I'd have the confidence. You know, you got to get out there. Use it as continuing education just like, just like doctors do, dentists do, you know, even real estate agents. It's about the continuing education. Well, think about this. We always talk about having a toolbox of tools, you know, yeah. let's increase our toolbox. What if you open that toolbox and you don't know how to operate any of those tools? And yeah. that's what it's like. It's like, I can have a whole bunch of techniques, but I don't mm -hmm. know how to do any of right. it. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's real important that, that you practice things and get real good at something and then, then move to something else. So you increase your repertoire of expert techniques that you have fine-tuned and became very skillful at executing. Yeah. Tom, thank you so much for taking the time to talk. Any, hey, any, final, My any, pleasure. any final words? No, I just say take uh, this word failure. Yeah. Where is that? <laughs> it's it's, right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's on there right somewhere. There. Yeah, there it is. And delete it. Get delete it out it. of your vocabulary. There's no such thing as failure. All there is is action, learning, perfecting, fine-tuning, testing, and creating. Yeah. And you'll be the best you can be. Absolutely. And it's the same with everything. D doctors, they're, yeah. we're all practicing. They're practicing medicine. We're practicing hypnotherapy. You know, I got to say, thanks again, Tom, for your time. Thanks, everybody that's thanks. watching now and that's going to watch later. Again, we're doing this in September of 2019. So if you're if you're watching any time in the next you know, six months or so, I mean, hopefully even sooner. But uh, me and Tom are going to figure out a, a date for him to do this, this training. Uh, I'm so looking forward to it. I'm excited. Um, and again, seriously, guys, this is not an opportunity you're going to get very often because he does work. He's, he's extremely expensive one-on-one, -on -one, which, and it's, he's worth it. I mean, I would be expensive and I'm not even worth it. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, uh, so uh, anyway, I'm worth it, but, but yeah, anyway, so, uh, anyway, so, um, hit me up if you want to take that, that, that training. And I do appreciate you watching. Stay tuned next time. Next episode, I've got Richard Barker and he's going to be talking about some, some tips for getting you started on your journey as well. So newbies, wannabes, we love you. Get out there, spread the word. We need your help to educate the public about hypnosis. So take care, be well, Absolutely. be awesome. And remember, All your right. success is my success. Thanks, Tom. Love it. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. You bet. Bye-bye now. Bye, everyone.